Tonight on the MGN News, cuts at the clinic. It, it's just, we're, we're struggling. Montana's largest hospital announces several layoffs as it works to stop a financial free fall. Plus, I'm Alina Howder. One historical Western painting is causing quite the controversy here in the Magic City. We'll tell you more coming up. And Montana made movie still making a splash 50 years after that big hit on the big screen. A look back at Little Big Man and its impact on the Crow community. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Andrea Lutz. The financial troubles continue for Billings Clinic, and tonight we're learning the hospital has begun laying off more than two dozen employees. This is all on the heels of a massive cost-cutting ongoing plan that's aimed at saving the hospital millions of dollars every single month. Our Charlie Kleps is tracking this latest development. The Billings Clinic has been battling some financial issues for months now, and things have officially boiled over after multiple employees were laid off this week. It's a frightening time for all involved, and many still working here fear what could come next. It, it's just, we're, we're struggling. That brutal honesty comes from the voice of one Billings Clinic employee. It's scary. We're worried. We're we're freaking out. She's asked to remain anonymous, worried about potential backlash, but was more than willing to share the emotions running through the Billings Clinic right now. I would say many employees are very uneasy right now. It's just the unknown. You know, a lot of us have families that we need to feel confident that we're going to have a job and be able to support them. Those questions are fair ones as the clinic announced the first of roughly 25 layoffs Wednesday as the hospital continues to work to curb a four and a half million dollar a month budget shortfall. So we're really just setting, doing everything we can to set the organization up for the future and for future success. The layoffs are just the latest in a series of cost cutting measures. In March, CEO Clint Seeger unveiled a comprehensive plan that included everything from a company wide hiring freeze to pay cuts from hospital executives and a reduction in contract labor. These are um, not things that anybody wants to go through, but again, it's that change and sort of shift to the new climate that we're in in healthcare that will set us all up for success. The first five of the 25 to 30 layoffs expected are in the information systems and compliance departments. Seeger says no other layoffs are planned right now, and he hopes many of those being laid off will be rehired. And we want to do the right things for all of our employees, and, and so um, we hope to have many of the employees that this would impact. In, in other positions in the organization. But employees know the clinic's financial challenges are far from over and fear what could be next. We don't know what, what this is gonna look like. We don't know what they mean by restructuring. I'm stuck thinking this could happen to me. I am speechless, honestly. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. No big surprise, the temperature is cooler than average 50s, some mid 60s into the mix across southern Montana and northern Wyoming, but obviously some active weather as well. Where you see the blue flickers, we have uh, some lightning, some pockets of a little bit heavier rain, but notice we're still under the southwesterly flow in and across the region, and it's pulling in a bit more moisture today, so we're seeing these showers and thunderstorms popping up. We're going to get a little bit of a break tomorrow, but as we get into Friday and Saturday, already the National Weather Service has a flood watch into effect. We have the potential for more heavy rain. Portions of the region can see some strong to severe storms and this could linger into the weekend. We'll talk about the possible uh, outcome of this. The complete forecast coming up in a few minutes. The summer solstice means a lot for a growing number of people in America. We bring in our Casey Conlon now to talk about the longest day. Andrea, the longest day is one of the biggest fundraisers for Alzheimer's associations across the country. It's meant to shed light on the incredible burden this disease puts on patients and caregivers, a group that's larger in this community than most realize. I said, oh my gosh, she said, I can't believe how far she's gone at her age. Bruce Hamm has dealt with Alzheimer's before. Both his mother and mother-in-law died of the disease, but they were in their 90s. So he never guessed that a doctor would diagnose his wife, Marilyn, with it at 67. After the test, she said, probably been three to five years before that when it started. That was in 2017. Bruce and a caregiver were able to keep Marilyn at home until last week, when she moved into the memory care unit at Morningstar on Billings West End. 
He says Maryland has gone severely downhill in the last two months. I couldn't talk to her anymore. I couldn't, I usually can, you know, kind of cue her to do things, but the last couple months, she can maybe get one word out. It's so cruel because you still see them, you look at them, but they're just not that same person anymore. Sean Pearson is the community relations director at Morningstar. Their memory care unit is completely full and numbers are trending up. There were 22,000 Montanans with Alzheimer's in 2020. By 2025, there will be 27,000, a 22.7% increase. No matter how much you care and the, how good your care is, someday you know you're going to lose someone that you've, you've developed a, a affection for, you love. It's one of the many reasons volunteers were washing cars, running photo booths. We nailed it. <laughs> I think we got it. And serving some of the longest hot dogs you've ever seen at Morningstar Wednesday. It was one of 10 different longest day fundraisers across town. And Bruce would go to every one if he could. The number of people that have it and the number of people that are going to have it, I think is something that has to be worked on and it costs money to work on. And to me, it's an important thing because I've been living it. He's certainly not alone. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. Billings beloved Moss Mansion is dealing with quite the predicament after staff noticed ceiling tiles in the kitchen of that historic home falling down. And I'm told the fix isn't very easy, not like just heading to the hardware store. We'll take a look at this large section of the ceiling. Those tiles came down, of course. It's a site the Moss staff has seen before back in the 1980s. This is also how the kitchen looked, but those tiles were restored. However, now the fix will not be as easy. Those tiles are very rare and imported from overseas, and preservation must meet historic standards. In a historic building, like this one that's 120 years old this year. It's always something. It's always something at your house. It's always something when you rent. It's always something. It's the faucets or the floor or the doors or the windows. And with that added element of preservation, the standards that we need to meet, um, it's just trickier. It's not, it's not running to the hardware store. Well, the Moss is looking to donors now for help as those tiles are, of course, an unforeseen issue and cost. The mansion operates off of donations and accessing those proper materials and meeting the historic preservation standards do make all of it a bit more challenging. A historic painting donated to the city of Billings is now heading to the auction block to help raise as much as a half a million dollars to fund some new projects. But the decision is drawing some criticism. MTN's Alina Howder explains. It's a painting that once sat here at the Yellowstone Art Museum, but will now have a new home come July. The Billings Chamber of Commerce has decided to auction off the painting The Young Chief by Joseph Henry Sharp, and community members aren't happy with that decision. It was 1905 when famed painter Joseph Henry Sharp painted this scene of a serene crow settlement. This man didn't just sort of think about this painting. He was there while he painted it. Billings resident Patty Reynolds has a special connection to Sharp's paintings. Her grandfather, former Forsyth attorney Fritz Haynes, passed down two of Sharp's works to her parents, who unfortunately had to sell them in the 70s for financial reasons. So when they left the family, all of my brothers and sisters were upset over it, but we could do nothing about it. That feeling of loss is what Reynolds is hoping to save the Magic City from. To lose a painting of this significance from the state of Montana and from Billings, I just felt I had to speak up and ask, the community, do we want, is this what you want? The painting had been at the Yam since 1967, intermittently on display, but mostly kept out of sight. Unfortunately, for these uh, at least past four or five decades, it's primarily been in storage. The chamber has tried to sell it before, canvassing the membership in 2008. And 73% of those businesses at the time said that we should sell it again. The economic crisis of 2008 prevented that from happening, but the goal to sell has been there for decades. It's not our mission uh, uh, to preserve and, and to own and to curate art such as this. Um, and the discussion at the board for, again, several decades has been, 
it would be uh, much more effective and serve our mission if the painting were to be sold and some of the revenue used to really uh, hammer home some of the issues impacting our community. The painting is set to be auctioned off in Reno, Nevada on July 15th and is estimated to be worth between three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. But Reynolds hopes dozens of community emails and calls will inspire a chamber change of heart. My grandfather would be irate. There would have been a lot more feathers ruffled by now. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. It's hard to find a movie that made a bigger splash in crow country than Little Big Man. Starring Dustin Hoffman, it tells the story of a man raised by Cheyenne who survives the battle of Little Bighorn. As the film turns 50 this year, Jackie Coffin shows us how much it still means. It's a rainy day here in Gary Owen, but that didn't dampen any spirits as people came here to relive Hollywood history. Looking back at the scenes of Little Big Man shot here at the Medicine Tail Coulee. Some of the most iconic scenes of a movie that made Hollywood history, filmed right here in Montana. This, this movie was very important to the Crow community because, first of all, the excitement. Little Big Man is a 1970 Western that redefined the role of American Indians in cinema, flipping the script of the American frontier and shifting the focus to indigenous people. The first major box office hit movie that dealt with uh, Indians as people. It developed character, it showed family life. And it leaned on Montanans, Native American communities to host, help, and act in the production. Today we are still here because of the warriors that we portrayed stood their ground. That days of Little Big Man. Duke Goes Ahead was 14 years old when the film crew came to town looking for Native American riders. I was uh, 14 years old and I rode a lot of horses back then. Riding horses was part of being participating in the as a warrior, as a Sioux warrior. And some of his favorite memories are watching a Hollywood crew in action. Then I understood why you had to film it, then cut out, cut it off, and then you do it again. And riding down the bluff in the Battle of Little Bighorn. And they told us to put your feet against the flank, the front flanks, and lay back and hang on. Reliving the film and preserving its history is the goal of a three-day symposium in Hardin, featuring panels, tours, and exhibitions. And my thinking was, hey, there's still people alive who can talk about this just 50 years later, so let's do it now. An incredible collection of Little Big Man memorabilia shows the impact the movie had beyond Montana. Cut, and they told us to go back up there. We're going to take another one. Panels of actors, extras, and experts came together to discuss the movie in their first-hand memories. More than 50 years after the movie came out, the legacy of Little Big Man and its giant leap forward for representation of Native Americans lives on fondly in Crow Country. Not everybody gets to do it, but I can say that I did. In Hardin, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News on Q2, from great food to a unique environment, a new gastropub is now calling Billings home. We'll take you there next, and in sports, behind the mic, we'll catch up with the man who brings all of the Mustangs' action to life. Stay with us.